Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, the new home of power mining analysis. In today's episode, Anthony Power and I have a stacked agenda. We're going to be going through a number of pieces of news that have come out this week, some good, some bad, all relevant to the Bitcoin mining space and obviously the Bitcoin mining companies we cover. We've got a lot to go through, but before we get into it, please take a second, hit the like button, you guys. It's a huge help to myself, the channel. Anthony loves it and it helps get this content to other people who may find it interesting. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. We're almost at 43,000 subscribers. We'd love to have you as part of the mining community. And finally, leave a comment in the section below. Let us know if you're holding any of the companies we discussed in today's video your thoughts and outlook on this news and your feelings heading into having which is now only a few weeks away now with that being said let's get into today's video Okay guys, so that's right. Today's video, we're hot <laughs> off the heels of yesterday's impressive Tara Wolf interview. A ton of comments. We're receiving a lot of really uh, interested investors and passionate Wolfpack members that were a big fan of that video. So if you haven't watched that, check it out, you guys. In addition to that, Anthony, we also have Bitdeer and HUD8 coming on tomorrow. Uh, HUD8's talking about earnings. So if you guys have any questions about those, Leave them in the comment section of this video. We'll make sure we address those in tomorrow's discussion. Bitdeer, we're going to try and publish tomorrow. HUD8, we're going to try and publish on Friday. Anthony, a lot of action in the space this week. How are you feeling? Yeah, a lot, a lot of good news updates coming out. A lot of good podcasts we've been doing. Yesterday's was a was an impressive podcast from uh, Paul. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got a busy week ahead of us. So yeah, it's, it's busy, busy, busy at the moment. It certainly is. So we'll get right into it. We've got four, maybe five companies we'll talk about today, depending how we're feeling. The first one is our good friends at Bit Digital. BTBT is the ticker on this one. Anthony just came out with some big news in relation to Bit Digital. This is a company we've followed quite closely on the channel. We've had the CEO on a number of times over the last couple of weeks. What's your take on the announcement today, expanding their AI business and getting closer to that $100 million revenue contract annually that we've been hearing Sam talk about? Yeah, we, we had Sam on the podcast last week and uh, he articulated, you know, the 50 million annualized revenue was 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 going to be increased to 100 million. We didn't know the timeline for that. I mean, we, we, we envisaged by the end of this year, but it looks like it's it's happening sooner than we think. So... You know, they've gone out um, and announced yesterday um, that they're expanding their existing agreement with their current um, customer and they're and they're going to be um, uh, getting an extra uh, 2,048 GPUs, which will take their total uh, to 4,096 GPUs and basically doubling their current capacity, doubling their revenues. Um, this is this is a you know a, a really good story because you know we've had we've had um, some of the miners like you know not not look at the HPC side of things and be and be a little bit critical but we've got a miner here that's delivering on what they said they said all along they didn't announce anything until they got the first customer and then it's just been a case of you know ramp up ramp up from there I think when when Sam init initially talked about the, this customer it was thirty five million now it's going to be a hundred million and I know that they're looking. Um, and he mentioned this in the podcast. They're looking for additional customers as well um, to, to basically, you know, keep uh, keep, keep uh, you know their, their uh, play in this in this particular space and make sure that they're not over leveraged with just one client. So they have a number of clients uh, available. But um, yeah, good a good update. Um, I noticed the, the market um, like this today. I mean, I think of the, of the miners that I'm looking at that bit digital was certainly higher in the, from a stock price today. Um, than some of the other miners. So the market quite likes this. I think that there's a, a little bit of catch up to be had because, you know, it, you know, when you've got two distinct businesses and you look at the peer, the valuation of some of the peer miners, it does look like Big Digital has been a little bit overlooked. But um, let's hope now with these type of updates coming out and the fact that they're about to, they'll be releasing their quarter one um, numbers probably in May, we'll get to see exactly what that contract looks like from a, obviously from a revenue, which we're seeing in the monthly updates, but from a cost position. Um, and that'll be an interesting part. Uh, but yeah, good update from BitDeer yesterday. 
Yeah, what I'm most excited for about Q1, Anthony, is seeing the margins on that contract. The other thing that's so impressive, it's no wonder the share price is doing okay today. Uh, Sam had articulated that last year mining revenue was about $44 million. They then announced a 35 upsize to $50 million HPC AI. So that eclipses their entire self-mining revenue last year. Now that's doubled. Uh, when you look at the market cap of this company, it, it's no wonder why Sam has expressed some frustration in share price because the amount of top line revenue they're bringing in, if the margins are as healthy as we've heard from some people like Hive, for example, and Sam, uh, we haven't seen yet, but this this could be some big numbers we're talking for Bit Digital. So uh, glad to see that update. Now on the same uh, topic, I guess, Anthony, the next one, Saluna Holdings. So another one of the smaller miners we cover on the channel, a really unique business model. Saluna kind of goes after uh, stranded renewable energy. So um, smaller sites than maybe a riot or something like that, but a lot more accessible and a lot more plentiful around the US right now. They've also announced they've actually completed um, the GPU installation for their co-location uh, partnership. So another exciting expansion into that HPC AI space. What was your take on Saluna? Yeah, I mean, you know, we know from Saluna as a as a company, they they have a you know a, a hosting business and a self mining business. Hosting business is about just over one and a half exahash, and the um, the self mining is is over eight hundred petash. So getting close to one exahash there. And they've also, like many of the of the miners in this space, um, I've, I've looked at the the HPC side of it and uh, looking at you know um, hosting miners for uh, you know for AI services. And they they must realise like a lot of the other miners who who've articulated some of the margins that you can achieve in this space um, from data centres and from data centres that are from a mining perspective uh, you know good quality build. And we've seen the Saluna data centers. We've, we've shared some of the footage of the of Saluna data centers when we've done podcasts and when we've done updates. Um, it, they do look impressive sites. So, you know, the jump from going to, uh, from a, a Bitcoin mining facility to a tier three uh, data center that can uh, utilize HPC, um, it, it may not be as big a stretch as, as, as initially some of the, um, People were discussing, you know, six, seven months ago when they were looking at, you know, 10, 10 times the capital outlay to get the same um, size center. Um, maybe some of these miners are, are working out that they can do something a little bit more creative. Um, maybe um, allow their, you know, uh, not a utilization of, you know, generally with HPC, you, you know, you're signing a contract to say uptime of about 99.999%. So they always say like the five nines which basically means 24 seven, you know, we know that in some of these locations, um, energy can be a, a challenge at certain points of the day. So it may be that some of these miners have got in uh, agreements where they're offering a service that's not at hundred percent, but it's, you know, not significantly lower because curtailment, um, you know, might, might get them down to, you know, a, a few percentage points. So they might be able to do some business, you know, offering a service and maybe, you know, a, a reduced revenue fee. But this is a good update from Saluna. It's just adding to their bailiwick of services. And, um, you know, a company that's, you know, literally single digit market capitalization It's something that, you know, people sort of have, a, have, a, have a, a look at a little bit more detail, understand what they're doing. But no, it's a good update. Yeah, it sure was, Anthony. And, and you made a comment a few videos ago saying, the riots, the marathon, the clean sparks, these were all the size of Saluna, Sato, DMG at one point in time, you guys. So that's why we like to cover that variety of, of size and scope on the channel. Now, switching gears a little bit, we're going to focus now on hardware, Anthony. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we covered the article. You put out a great article on BitDeer talking about all their different business units. They've now come to the table saying, hey, you know what? We've got the experience. We've got the R&D team in-house. We're going to start actually making our own rigs. So they came to market the Seal Miner A1. I love the name for whatever reason. Uh, it's, it's great performance. I think 18.1 joules per terahash. So very competitive with the S21 and the T21 models. Now they've said, hey, you know what? Not only have we created this, we're going to use this to, to build our self-mining fleet and to expand in 2024, 2025. Now, what's exciting about this, Anthony, 
you mentioned the chip cost makes up the majority of these rigs. So they're obviously going to be um, a financial benefit for the remaining 20% to develop and manufacture these in-house. But as I started thinking about that, there's a lot of benefits on supply chain, on timing, on repairs. By creating this completely vertically integrated self-mining ecosystem, there's really no element of chance or luck or um, confusion that could happen as we're starting to see from some of these asset light models, right? So curious to get your thoughts here. You, I, I would say, predicted this, Anthony. You were very fast out of the gate to say, hey, this is going to be a groundbreaking change for Bitdeer. I wasn't sure if they were going to be able to scale this and get this many units operational with that type of performance. Uh, but lo and behold, the, the resident analyst was right, Anthony. So walk us through this one. Yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, we, we have mentioned Bitdeer, you know, quite a few times in the last in the last few months with regards to, you know, their updates. And actually, um, you know, we did an article recently on them um, expressing all their sort of like businesses because they're not just self-mining. Self-mining probably represents you know, just over 40% of the business. They've got a big hosting business. They've got a cloud hash rate business. Um, they're looking at HPC, like a lot of the other miners. And then they came out with this announcement a few weeks ago about, you know, about going into the um, manufacturing um, elements of, of, of Bitcoin mining and producing their own mines. And this won't come as a, a total surprise to somebody that know the background of Bitdeer. I mean, Bitdeer themselves were formed from Bitmain a few years ago. And... Um, so, you know, you, you've got the, the, the co-founder of Bit, Bitmain is now the CEO of Bitdeer. Um, you know, I don't think there's any other mining companies out there that have a team of 50 um, R&D employees in the business. So, you know, those, those, um, those staff have obviously been doing a lot of things around the cloud hash rate, around looking at how to develop these miners. And they came out with uh, some results, you know, just over a week ago where they tested uh, some of the chips that they they um, received from TSMC, who who they've got a good relationship with, and it proved that they had a machine that was capable of of sort of like challenging the S and S twenty one and T twenty one models, um, with an efficiency of about eighteen point one joules per terahash. Now they've announced um, they're going to be able to um, produce about well, well over four exahash of machines, four point eight exahash of machines this year. And what that will enable them to do, it will enable them to grow the hash rate that they have at the moment, which is about 8.4 in self propriety hash rate, expand that by about 3.4. That will take them to 11.8 xhash by the end of the year. And they're also going to replace 1.4 of current older miners that they have in place. So looking to replace in more efficient miners and increase the hash rate to 11.8. But it doesn't really stop there. Um, they've got further... Um, um, expansions anticipated through 2025 because a lot of the miners now they're not just talking 2024 a lot of them have given their targets for 2025 and we've talked you know about the riot platforms and uh, you know uh, the likes of clean spot the likes of marathon digital the likes of um, iris energy uh, growing significantly this year but also carrying on that growth into 2025 well bit dear have announced uh, you know yesterday that they're looking to you know, maybe add, potentially add another 30 to 40 exahash. Um, again, replacing some of the older rigs with newer models. And, you know, that gives them a potential growth to 46 exahash by the end of 2025. And that's a, you know, that's a real bold statement to come out with. I mean, you know, we, we, we know in the past, uh, a lot of miners have put out growth targets. And, you know, uh, in, in 2022 and 2023, and very, very few actually achieve those targets that they, they put out. 2024 we're in now, and there's some really ambitious targets for this year and for next year. So we're going to have all eyes on who can sort of like deliver those targets because they are few and far between. And, you know, we had we had Paul on the channel last night articulating, um, you know, will some of these miners be able to do exactly what they say? Well, you know, you come out with a statement, you're going to have to stand up to the statement. Um, so, but up to now, they've done exactly what they've said. Um, you know, they they believe that the 80% of building these machines is the chip cost itself. And so if they can do that in-house, it's going to save them a lot of money. Um, if the Bitcoin price rises now, you know, and we're already seeing that the, the increase in prices for 
these other efficient miners on the market. So you've got the M the micro BT and you've got the Bitmain models. Then prices are creeping up now because the Bitcoin price is pre creeping up. So Bitday have gone out there and, and decided to, to do their own. And, and it looks like it's got some real potential. These are really big numbers. And who knows, um, these machines could become available for other miners to consider buying as well, which brings in another revenue stream for the company. So not only are they saving costs by building their own, there's an opportunity to bring in machines that can then compete, um, certainly from an efficiency perspective. Based, bear in mind, this was their first generation model, 18.1 joules per terahash. What's the second generation model going to look like? We'll wait and see, but I'm assuming it's going to be better than 18.1. Um, but we'll wait for them bit there to come out. But yeah, no, another great update. No kidding. And when we start to see some of those growth targets, Anthony, those numbers you're talking about, considering this is only 40% of their business at this point, um, really quite astonishing. So looking forward to the discussion with Bitdeer tomorrow, and we'll learn more about that strategy in the Seal Miner A1. Now jumping over to the next miner we want to talk about here, good old Marathon. They heard the news about the Seal Miner, Anthony, and they said, hey, not so fast, you guys. We, we can play at this game too. So Marathon Digital, they've come out with what they're coining the Mara 2-pick 700. Anthony, I was hoping, or one letter off, I was hoping it'd be called the Marathon Mara Pig 700 maybe or something like that, sticking with the animal theme, but I guess not. Now this one, cutting edge two-phase immersion cooling system. The numbers that really stood out here for me, Anthony, they're saying that they can actually reduce the amount of data center space by up to 75% because of how compact and dense these machines can be uh, located. And that also means 60% lower cooling costs, plus a number of other benefits that they feel can actually be used not only in the Bitcoin mining industry, but in a number of other um, high performance computing situations. So let's walk through this news. I did not see this one coming by any means, Anthony, but it looks like Bitdeer might have a little bit more competition than they thought. Well, the there was, there was a, you know, Marathon have got a significant interest in a company called Auradyne, but I don't believe these machines are from Auradyne. I believe there's a company called Kindra who are producing these machines on behalf of Marathon. So that's a Chinese, I think it's a Chinese company producing these machines. So um, it's, it, as I say, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not just the three big companies um, trying to do this now. It's not just the bit mains, the micro BT, the Canards. You've got the likes of know Auradine, Kindra, you've got, you know, uh, Bitdeer, and you've got other other potential new entrants to the market. Um, and so, you know, that'll be interesting to see by the end of the year. We've discussed this on a, a previous podcast, you know, is there is there a, a, a large barrier to entry for these companies coming into this space? Um, and if Bitdeer can do what they said they can do, um, it appears it's not as big as, as thought. And having more entrance to the market, might give an opportunity to keep the prices competitive, um, even when the Bitcoin price rises, um, because obviously the miners won't be operating in a sort of like a cartel environment where they, you know, they try and inflate prices to keep everyone happy. But you know, more, more competition is good for everybody, good for all miners. And so we don't know too much about um, the, the efficiency. We know that, like you've articulated. It can reduce the size of the space required for the for the amount of hash rate that you're going to be achieving, and also the the fact they can operate in extreme temperatures. Although I don't know what the, where Marathon have got any sites that are at minus twenty. I don't know if they're going down to the Antarctic Circle or something like that. But we'll we'll probably find out with another update with you know Fr Fred on the South Pole or something maybe, and uh, <laughs> we got there first. Um, but um, but it's 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 certainly you know uh, an opportunity for them. Um, it, Fred's talked about immersion cooling, you know, a lot in the last sort of 18 months and that the company was moving to that to that technology because you can effectively, um, you can do two things. You can run your machines um, with a lot less power um, and still get the same benefit or you can overclock your machines and, and, and ramp up. And, and this, you know, this update sort of looks at, you know, how they can maybe get more from their machines. And so he was articulating if he can get sort of like 30, 40 percent more more hash rate, more Bitcoin, um, that benefit will be far greater than the additional energy cost to achieve that extra. Because if you're going to ramp the machines up, it does take more power to do that. So um, the immersion cooling is obviously, you know, it's, it's a technology used to dissipate the heat from these mines because these mines do get really, really hot. And if you're in environments where the weather's hot, so they've got, you know, immersion 
cooling technology at their sites in Abu Dhabi, and they're going to start probably utilising more of this in their sites in Texas, where the temperatures get to sort of like 45, 50 in, in, the, in the heat of the summer. So um, this is just, you know, it, it, it wasn't totally expected. Um, maybe um, we thought it might be Auradyne who has who've done some real real development in the in the in, in producing bitcoin miners and they're probably you know at the moment going out there testing them and all these companies that produce these miners do send um you know machines to co competitors you know competitive companies to test them you know at the end of the day if you're going to sell machines you want to send out machines for testing purposes so you know um it's going to be it's going to be an interesting time because in 2021 when the bitcoin price rallied to 69,000 some of these companies were paying 80 dollars a terahash for 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 hash rate and as we've seen in the in the late 2023 early 2024 when you see these some of these miners that have put in some significant orders those orders have been put in between 14 and 16 terahash for machines that are more than twice as efficient as 2021 so the gulf between prices then and prices now um um, although we are starting to see those prices start to increase, um, it's significant. And with new entrants to the market, it might just help keep the pricing down for a lot of these miners to start replacing. Because one thing we don't know is, you know, is, is you know, how long are these machines going to last in their, in their current environments? You know, we've had no real data about immersion technology. Are machines going to last, you know, six, seven years in immersion technology? You know, some of these machines, BitDeer are replacing machines now. How old are the machines they replaced? Are they three or four years? Are you replacing your fleet after three or four years? What does it cost to replace your fleet? These are all, you know, good questions that, you know, probably shareholders want to know the answers to. Um, but if you can, if you can, have a, a mining machine that lasts longer with an efficiency rate that still enables you to mine and produce a profit and immersion cooling is that technology, then you're going to see the likes of, you know, Marathon. You're going to see the likes of right platforms because, you know, Jason's articulated that one gigawatt site at Corsicana, that's 100%, that's 100% immersion cooling. And they have, you know, two, uh, for two, uh, um, uh, uh, facilities at uh, the uh, Rockdale site uh, with immersion cooling there. So, you know, this is not new to them. And then you've also got another number of other miners. Uh, Argo blockchain use the Helios facility and that's immersion cooling. Cleesbock have a small amount of immersion cooling. It, it might be single digit percentage wise. Um, but, you know, this this might be, we might start seeing now this, these the advancement in immersion technology for mining companies might might see a way that they're going to start, you know, um, having having chose the right the right talent to go forward. All this talk of immersion and the efficiency increases, Anthony. I might start editing our videos in the bathtub or shower here, buddy, just to see how the performance of the MacBook goes up. But uh, no, all kidding aside, you guys, great, great update from Marathon. You're definitely right, Anthony. I didn't see that one coming, uh, but I'm of the opinion the more players in the game, uh, the better it is for everyone, especially in an industry that's so controlled by these three traditional rig developers or rig uh, manufacturers. Now, the final piece of news, I wanted to throw this in, not to pick on anyone, Anthony, but last week we were uh, talking about about the 30% tax. We asked a lot of our interviews about that. That was kind of the fear, uncertainty, doubt of, of last week. Now this week, we've had an environmental group um, called Save Carbon County come out and actually press charges against Stronghold Digital for some alleged um, releases of, I think it was mercury and sulfur dioxide. So for a long time, we've been kind of moving on the path of, hey, Bitcoin is becoming more friendly. It's eco-friendly. It's good for the grid, good for the communities. Now we have this one kind of come out of left field. What's your take on this? Is is this kind of a last ditch effort? Are we starting to see more of this? I know there's a few companies in litigation right now. Do you see this as a as a risk to the industry, Anthony, or is this kind of a more one off situation? I don't see it as a risk to the industry, and I don't I don't know you know how much substance the claim has. But one thing that Stronghold um, had against other mining companies is that we they were using waste coal to um, deliver energy um and mine bitcoin and what they were doing then was they were actually turning those those sites into green into greenfield sites so re, re, you know effectively repairing the landscape um and i know the miner was doing this and so this is going to be an interesting story to watch um you know it, we, we see so much uh, fear uncertainty and doubt in the space you know if it's not 
um, the machines making noise, uh, using the amount of energy, the size of, well, it's, I don't know what the latest country is, Sweden or Finland or whichever country they, 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 they try to use as a, as a, as a, as a guide, um, to, uh, you know, to, to other things. And this is just an, an, another of those lines of, you know, it sounds like, you know, is, is there any, you know, real um, truth in, in, in the statement? But, you know, I'd want to sort of like make sure that um, um, these tests are carried out to make sure that there isn't any, any mercury or sulfur dioxide being released. I mean, that, that can't be great for the public. But, uh, you know, I dare on the caution the fact that, um, you know, if I'm assuming Stronghold would, would be doing tests at their sites anyway to make sure they're full within the environmental um, standards of the state that they operate in. So um, it's interesting that the, 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 the county haven't come out with a statement either way. So, um, you know, it might not be a strong case, but, you know, the, these mining companies, you know, part of their day-to-day -day business is, is dealing with these type of, of lawsuits and some of them can be frivolous. I don't know if this one's frivolous and we'll, we'll, we'll find out more, I'm sure, in the, in the days, weeks and months to come. But um, I wrote about Stronghold uh, Mining, you know, nearly two years ago and highlighted what they were doing in a positive way um, in the environment, uh, you, know, re you know, repurposing these sites where waste coal had been and making them nice and green, usable sites. Um, and, you know, it was a definite, um, it was a definite positive story for their behalf. Um, but as I say, I, I don't know the extent of how, how, how much truth is in the statement. It'll be interesting to see how that one plays out. The thing that came to mind for me, Anthony, is both from Terra Wolf and from Clean Spark, we heard how important it is with institutional investors to have that green energy renewable story as part of the Bitcoin brand. Um, obviously, Clean Spark has really, even in their name, they've got that incorporated. Terra Wolf using the nuclear renewable power, hydro. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that develops if institutions start to gravitate towards those more ESG type of companies um, or maybe take some, take some chances with companies like Stronghold that are doing really innovative things in a different way. And again, like you say, have been known for their cleanup traditionally, Anthony. Um, so that one's one we'll keep an eye on. You guys, a lot to go through today. Leave a comment in the section below. Let us know your thoughts. If you're holding any of the companies we discussed, if you're not subscribed to the channel, McNally Money, feel free to join. Anthony, thanks so much for being here. I'll give you last word today. Yeah, so last word today is we have um, two companies coming on the rest, rest of this week. We've got BitDeer and we've got HUD8 coming on the show. So if you've got questions, put them in the comments and we'll always take a sample of those questions. We use a lot of uh, investor-related questions yesterday for the podcast with, with Paul and we put him through the paces and we equally want to, to do the same again with, with the two companies this week. But I'm looking forward to, so it's a great week for podcasts this week and um, I'm just wondering if what, what we've got for the week following because um, you know we've had, some, we've had some fantastic podcasts over the last couple of weeks now. We've had Ben Gagnon, We've had Jason Les come on, and we've had you know Sam Tabar come on. Um, you know we've had a you know a whole range, and then we've Paul, Paul last night as well. Um, there's been some good content um, going out there, and people are getting it firsthand. I, mean, I don't know how many podcasts we've done with CEOs or with chief mining officers or with senior uh, met team members from these companies since January, since we started this process. But you know well over double figures and we're only you know sort of like getting towards the end of march now so that you know the year is young a lot more to get through i think we did about 15 in q1 and that's a great point if you guys go into the playlists you can see power mining interviews those will have all the interviews in there the other easter egg since uh it's close to easter here and we're close to the end of the video anthony I wanted to drop, we are reaching out to BitFarms, you guys. We are aware of the CEO transition news. Um, we want to get an update on that. Obviously, there's a lot going on internally, but our commitment is to get you guys an interview and, and get an understanding of what's going on there, whether it's with Ben, the new CEO, whatever the case is, but we've definitely heard those comments as well. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Appreciate the time. Anthony, we'll see you tomorrow.